Hey, what's up? I'm Jason and I'm a game developer. Today, I want to talk to you about assets and middleware in game development. And I want to dispel some myths, some things that people think or questions that really people come to me with all the time about whether or not they can use these assets, whether people use these in real games in AAA games. Like, hey, when you worked at AAA studios, do you use these same kind of things that we're talking about on these YouTube videos and that I see in the asset store and other places? So today, that's what I'm going to be discussing. I'm going to go over my experience with assets and middleware in AAA development and in indie development. I want to give a little bit of advice about, um, well, what I would recommend you do it in those different situations. And I'll talk probably a little bit about some of the assets that I've used in the past and how I've seen that go. So I want to get started by just saying, make sure that you hit the like button, subscribe and share this video because it really does help. It makes a big difference and leaving a comment down below helps as well. If you hate this kind of content, just uh, hit the dislike button and leave a comment, I guess. But you're probably not going to dislike it. So just go ahead and hit the thumbs up button and then we'll get started. So do we use assets in AAA game development? That's one of the first things that I want to talk about because it's something that I think comes up a lot and people see things like the asset store and they go, oh yeah, that's just beginner stuff. That's uh, you know indie stuff or that's something smaller that bigger companies aren't going to use. And to a degree, they're a little bit right. And in the bigger industries or in the bigger companies, when we use assets, it's generally not really called assets. They're not from things like the asset store. They're usually bigger things that are branded as middleware. And if you just do a little search for middleware online, you'll find all kinds of different things that pop up. Some of the most popular ones, though, are video playing middleware things that allow you to play different video types that you couldn't play normally and do it easily. Like you'll see that for old school videos or games used to do this all the time for the video intros or the video clips, like the uh, cutscenes and stuff. They would have middleware that would play those. Another really popular one is Speed Tree. So most games that I've worked on in the AAA industry use Speed Tree to render their trees. It's something that's been really easy to integrate with uh, Unreal in the past, and I, it's pretty easy to do in Unity as well. But it gives you like fast, varied trees that look good and work well. And the reason that companies use these things, the reason that we use things like Speed Tree or some of the AI systems or the physics systems that exist. A lot of those are really middleware systems as well. The reason that we use those in AAA games is because they're not really the core part of our game. They're not the thing that we're building. We're building some other type of game and we happen to need trees. Trees aren't the core of our game. In fact, most games, trees aren't the core of their game, which is probably why Speed Tree is one of the most popular middleware things because everybody kind of needs trees if they got outdoor environments, but Nobody really wants to build a whole giant tree system. It's a waste of time. But remember, it's not only trees. It's also things like physics systems, AI systems. That was a big one when I was at Sony. We used a, well, one of the teams used a third-party AI system that was, I remember, a really big deal back in the day. I think that they've all shut down since then, since the whole company got bought and split up and everything. But you get the idea. Middleware is a big thing. It's used by almost every game company in some degree. I would say probably just about every game company. There might be one or two out there that aren't. But in general, it's something that most companies are going to use to solve problems. And it's essentially larger scale assets, slightly more expensive with a bigger contract, a bigger deal. Maybe not all the time anymore because things are getting a little bit more accessible. But that's generally the way it was. Nowadays, though, things are a lot more accessible. A lot of the middleware that you want to grab is now bundled into a much tighter package that you would, on in a Unity context, at least call an asset or something that would be an asset pack on the asset store. And if you're an indie developer, these assets can really, really save your life. They can make it so that building a project isn't, well, a lifelong endeavor. It's something that's realistic and reasonable and easier to accomplish in your time frame. That doesn't mean that assets are going to obviously solve all of your problems. So talk a bit about that. But they do make it much, much quicker to get to the core of your game. You got to remember, whenever you're building a game, there's like one thing that's the core piece of your game, like the main loop of your game. And you really want to focus on that. And anything that you can do to speed up the development or outsource or just kind of offset the other stuff that you don't necessarily need to focus on, that is going to make a big difference to get stuff done faster. And it could also be for a big portion of your game, though, or a key part of your game. I can think of a couple examples 
just in uh, VR development alone that I've done. So one of the games that we did was Mighty Monster Mayhem. It was this building breaking rampage game where you'd climb around and just punch buildings and tear them apart. It was fun multiplayer, not super popular, but it did use a very popular asset from the asset store. In fact, if you go look at the assets on the asset store, I think it shows up as the first one there, Ray Fire for Unity, which is a building breaking asset that just allows you to predefine, well, not I think not just buildings, but just about anything, predefine breaking structures and then put the objects together and then make it so you can easily break them in game and have good performance. And this worked like I said, in VR for a VR game that was multiplayer. So these kinds of things wouldn't have been possible to build without some sort of an asset like that, or at least if we had built it, it would have taken dramatically longer. It wouldn't have been as good and it would have been, um, yeah, it probably just wouldn't have happened. We would have probably looked at it and be like, okay, we could build something, but building a whole breaking system is gonna take longer than building the game. It's probably not worth it. We'll move on to something else. But with assets, it becomes suddenly possible to build something like that out in just a couple of months. And speaking of VR, I'm thinking back to Blade Shield that uh, Michael built and using one of the slicing assets that made it so we could slice robots in half really cool, which is another just big speed improvement. I can think of a lot of different assets. In fact, if you look at just the top assets on the Unity Asset Store under the Tools section, if you're sorted by popularity, you'll find a whole bunch of extremely useful assets, at least in the Unity context. Things like Rayfire that I talked about earlier, the A-Star Pathfinding Pro, which was kind of the best pathfinding system until very recently. I think that right now it's kind of up in the air between that and the Unity Nav Mesh system, but for the longest time, A-Star was like the only good option to use. Dungeon Architect for building out giant games or giant dungeons automatically and having them actually look cool. I've loved that asset for as long as it's been around, I think. The Shapes one for generating cool vector shapes. There's a lot. I can just scroll through and there's all kinds of different, very useful things that you can use. What I usually recommend though, is not to just go grab some asset and throw it into your game. Instead, look for problems that you're trying to solve. And when you need to solve the problem, do a little bit of a search. Look online, look at the asset store, look at blog posts and other things and find out who's already solved that problem, how they solved it, and if maybe that solu solution that they've already done and provided is available as an asset that'll just get the job done. If you need to build out like a giant dungeon, you need to generate a lot of dungeons, don't go build your own system for it. I mean, you can if that's really what you wanna do, but I would recommend spending a couple dollars, you know, spend the, I don't know what it's at now, it's not on sale, but when it goes back on sale, buy Dungeon Architect or one of the other assets like that to automatically generate stuff for you. Save yourself the time and actually build your game so that you can get your game done, get it finished and release it. So easy to get distracted and just keep building out assets or keep building out little side things like a random tree generator. You don't need to do this. We need to focus on the fun, focus on the game and just get it done. So that's all I really wanted to talk about today. I just wanted to let everybody know that using assets is completely fine. Almost every game that you play is going to have some level of assets, some third party middleware in it. I'd say probably every game that you play is going to. At the very least, they're going to be using somebody else's engine that's already been built for them. But I'd say most of the time, you're going to find that if you decompiled the game or looked through the source, there's some level of stuff that they've pulled in from other developers to get the job done, to get the game released and get it out there. And this is going to be even more so in the better games because they've got a lot more work. Anyway, I'm going to shut up about this now. I just want to say thanks for watching. Make sure that you hit the like button, subscribe. And if you have favorite assets or just thoughts on this middleware stuff, drop a comment down below. I'm kind of curious to see if everybody thinks I'm crazy or if they all love using assets and they've all seen the same kind of situation in their AAA development and indie development um, or not. You know, maybe I'm nuts. I don't know. We'll see you later. All right. Thanks again and bye.